So our visitor today will be Dr. Paul Schofield from the University of Cambridge and he is the reader in biomedical informatics where he works at the Department of Physiology, Development and Neuroscience and his expertise is on mouse biology, human disease, genetics and molecular pathology. Okay, so my name is Paul Schofield. I'm a reader in biomedical informatics uh, in Cambridge and um, I've been in Cambridge now for nearly 30 years, so that's actually now really become my, um, my, my real and my intellectual home. Um, I started life as a biologist, so really I'm a biologist, in fact a biochemist, and um, have always had a, an interest in genetics and bit by bit I've moved towards working on mammalian genetics and particularly an interest in mice and in humans and using mice as models for, for, um, uh, for human diseases. But it became apparent a while ago that actually we now have so much data available and there's so much potential in all that data, both for model organisms and for humans, that we really need to put all that data together to get the maximum benefit from it. And that's where the problems start, because actually genetic data in many ways is, uh, although we know it's in incredibly large, it's relatively straightforward in comparison with what we call phenotypic data. So what's a phenotype? Well, a phenotype is something you can measure, okay? So it's the color of my hair, the length of my leg, whether I have a predisposition to get some disease or other, all these are aspects of phenotype. And it's very easy for me to talk about these, but actually computers find this very difficult to do. So computers don't understand English words. And so consequently, one has to conceptualize and make it simple for a computer to understand. And then we can begin to mobilize all that data. Um, and that's really um, the point at which I came together with um, Professor Herndorf and um, some other colleagues, particularly um, George Gutos in Birmingham now. And we came up with a way of actually using phenotypes. And when we can actually use phenotypes as part of this huge data set, then we can begin to get insights into what genes do, and we begin to identify um, which genes are important when things go wrong. And that's really, if you like, the, um, the approach we've been taking, not only with um, human diseases, and particularly initially with human inherited diseases, so what we call Mendelian diseases, where you actually inherit a mutant disease, a mutant gene from your mother or your father, and then you actually see the disease in, in, the, in the offspring. Um, but a lot of diseases are much more complex than that. And it's not just one gene that's um, a, a problem, it's many genes. And sometimes you need to actually be able to work out which of the variants in a genome is responsible for the disease. And when it gets to several variants, it becomes even more complicated. And that's where our system actually, I think, is now being applied, um, hopefully with some exciting results. Um, there's a little sort of, um, we've, we've started applying this now to um, cancer as well, because in cancer, when we look at the development of an individual tumour, um, uh, there's often many genes involved, but one gene is the gene that actually, when it becomes altered, will precipitate the formation of the tumour. And finding that one important gene in a set of other genes is a kind of analogous problem to finding the mutation in uh, an individual which causes their genetic disease. It's finding the mutation which causes the cancer. And if we can find that mutation, then we can design therapies to actually deal with that and try and knock that on the head and stop the cancer progressing and developing. And so, um, although looking at um, Mendelian diseases and looking at cancer seem to be quite different, in fact, we can apply the technologies, tools and approaches that we've built up over the last, well, more than 10 years, really, to both of these biological problems. And that's really where we're at today. I feel particularly uh, privileged and, and, and very happy to be collaborating at KAUST because um, here we have um, a critical mass of people and of expertise and uh, an extremely well-resourced 
um, Institute, which means that there is very little that I can think that I might want to do that we can't actually do here, uh, both in terms of expertise and computational resource, etc. And um, it's very exciting to have a group of really uh, dedicated and enthusiastic students and postdocs working on the problems which I find most interesting. So this kind of collaboration, um, and particularly because um, here Professor Herndos' group is a computational group, uh, he's an informatician, he's people are informaticians, um, whereas I'm a biologist, we can bring together our complementary skills and we work together very um, um, very closely and that gives us a, a huge um, a huge advantage so um, yeah it's it's really very nice being here